All right, good afternoon and welcome. Today we're going to be doing another painting from Yviv, Ukraine. Uh, we are going to be doing something just a little bit different, though, in terms of our palette. If you notice over here, we only have four colors. This is a, a great drill I think people should do or painters should do more often. I find beginners really worry too much about color and not enough about tone. Tone being the lightness and darkness of your, your colors relative to everything else in your painting. If you look at a black and white photo, there's no color at all, but it's very easy to read. And so I, I think we can definitely take a lesson from that. So today, all I have is this is, uh, these are Daniel Smith. We've got Joseph Z's Neutral Gray, Burnt Sienna Light, Lavender, and Chinese White. Simply, it's gonna be a warm and a cool color, and then something that we can darken our colors with and something that we can lighten our colors with. Um, I've already got a sketch going down here. I will put our reference photo up here in the right side of the screen so you can take a look. But we are going to go ahead and get started. So <clears throat> let's get our paper wet. All right. And let's get to work with our minimal palette here. So I've used this before. So I've got a little bit of just, I guess, gray coloring down here. I'm going to pull our cool color is lavender down to the bottom and we're just going to make a stroke. I want to keep the sky pretty light and pretty cool. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Need to be a little careful because it is a little dark on me. I'll throw a little just kind of pure lavender in there just to mix things up. As we're working down the page, the only shape I'm going to worry about not painting on this first wash is going to be this building here, it's going to be in light. So I want to just keep that in mind. Everything else, I think we're going to just go ahead and paint on our first go. I may come back and go over this, this roof line just because I may leave that in light as well, but that's okay. We'll figure it out. All right. So let's go over our roof line, pull this down. Yeah, looking pretty good so far. Pull a bit more lavender. And just work our way down. All right. And I'm just putting a little bit of pure color in there just to mix things up a little bit. Now, I do want to have a gap of light coming through here. And I want it to be, I want it to be warmer. So I'm going to pick up some of that pure sienna. And I actually, I may start over here and let this dry just a little bit. We've got kind of a, a bead going down here. And while I do like that, I don't really want it to bleed too much into our, our foreground. So I'm going to start over here. Let's just get this building going. Now, I've got some windows here. And I want to, anytime I've got a building in light, I want to leave some gaps of that, that white paper for those windows. I just think it... It reads just a little bit better. All right, that looks pretty good. And the bottom half of the building will be in shadow, so I'm not, not super concerned about what's going on down, down there. Now, this is still wet. I'm going to come back. Oops, grabbed a little bit too much paint. I'm going to come back up there. Just grab some darker, a little warmer. Maybe not that warm. But I want to throw in... <coughs> Just kind of the impression of some clouds here. And now I don't want to go crazy with it, but yeah, we'll see. That's a little dark for my liking. It is going to dry a whole lot lighter. But I am going to just dab out just kind of the tops of those dark cloud shapes, right? Yeah. And we'll leave it alone. <clears throat> I think that looks good. All right, now let's work on that gap of light, right? Coming right through there. And it may, yeah, I think that looks good. I'm actually going to leave a little bit of those kind of open flex there just to help give even more of an impression of, of light through there. The bottom of this is going to be in shadow later, and so I'm just going to just pick up some color. I don't really care a whole lot about the temperature at this point. I just want to cover the foreground. Oops, 
a little bit too much of that neutral. That's okay. A little bit more of our sienna. Keep it warm. All right. So that's looking pretty good. Ooh, I almost forgot. I need to do this roof here. Now, I want the roof to be pretty thick in pigment. So I'm going to pick up a little mixture of both there. And we're just going to cruise right along the top and let it bleed into both the sky and the body of our building. And I may just do a little extra paint here because I may leave some of that in light as well. Okay. I think I think we're about good here. I may grab just while this painting's wet and just add like some who knows little little frame things to these these windows here. And I'll let that bleed in a little bit. All right. <clears throat> we'll leave that alone. Okay. So our first wash is done. I'm going to let this dry completely and then we'll get back together and continue working on this painting. All right. And just like that, we are back. <clears throat> this is completely dried. I think our sky looks excellent. Um, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to work on this building first, this tower shape. It's going to be furthest in the distance. So I think to keep it simple, since it is so far off, I'm going to paint the whole thing in just one kind of neutral tone and just leave out any any details or anything like that. So I'm going to put a mark down. Let me spray this just to get a little moisture on our paper, help the paint move. And I think that tone is decent, but I want to cool it off. So I'm going to grab something more lavender. Let's see. I think that's pretty good. And again, this is going to be in the distance, so I'm I'm not <clears throat> I'm not super worried about detail or anything like that. I'm just going to work my way up this shape. Oops, I maybe pulled that brush a little a little too far over. That's no big deal. Always keep paper tail on hand. It is, I guess, watercolors really only eraser. All right. I'm going to pick up just something a little darker for the top of that tower. And that is probably a little too dark. I may have to weaken that up a little bit. I'm just adding some, some interest there, a little, some antennas. And I'm pulling down that, that dark top. All right. Now let's keep moving our way down. And <clears throat> if you've watched any of my other videos, don't be afraid to leave some little specks of, of white in there. It helps make everything look just a little bit more natural. Okay. That's looking nice. That is looking very nice. All right. So that tower is going to be further off in the distance there. It may be. I'm wondering if it's too dark. I'm just trying to kind of squint and look relative to the sky. It does look maybe just a little too dark, but I'm going to leave it alone for now and let it dry just a little bit because I could be wrong. That's always the hardest part with watercolor because what you see is not what you get, right? It's going to lighten up. But let's start moving into these, this area here. Now, I am going to have to darken this up because it is closer, so I'm going to pick up almost some some just full on pigment here and start start just working through here again I'm not I'm not worried about not worried about too much it needs to be darkened up a little bit and if I can again I'm I'm trying to move that brush a little bit fairly quickly I, uh, the more you can suggest, it's just the easier painting becomes. It's, it's kind of remarkable, really. All right, I've got this dome shape here, so I'm going to pick up just some lavender. I 
think in that reference photo it was a a cooler color. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's add our cap here. Kind of go around that. Let's get that smaller brush. Just kind of maybe pull some antennas down into that. Okay. Now I'm going to warm it up here because I want to have a light coming through. There's an arch or something over here. So this bottom half of the building should be a little bit lighter. And I'm going to just grab some water and just kind of push it around a little bit there. All right. Something like that. Okay. And then this is still dark though here. Okay. And you know what? That building has kind of worked out back there. I think the tone is is fairly accurate. I am gonna darken up this dome here though just a little bit. Give it a little bit more, a little bit more power. Yeah, this is looking okay. This is looking okay. All right. I'm going to spray this just to keep it alive. And we're going to work on this building over here, I think. A little bit of water. Before I do that, I'm going to come in here and just add a couple little roof line type you know, details on that. A little bit too lavender. Just a little something. All right, that'll bleed out anyways. Okay, now, hmm. Let's do this building here. I'm gonna have the roof in light. And I've already got a decent gray going down here, but I do just need to warm it up. Okay, so. Let's make a line and see what we think. I think that's pretty good. I think that's good. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to put that under roof line we always talk about. Right? It would be just a little bit darker under the actual crest of that roof. Crest. I don't know what it's actually called, but you know right under the roof as it comes over to lay that shadow would just be a little darker. I'm going to leave that alone. All right. Spraying this again. Now, this is where things are going to get important, right? So we've got this, this shadow here that I'm going to go ahead and block in, I think. I'm just going to pull it down. And sometimes with watercolor, you just got to go for it. You know, what happens, happens. All right, so there's our shadow coming across from this other building here. And then I'm just going to mark this to kind of mark it out. Yeah. And we've got this kind of, got this kind of shape going here. And I'm just squinting my eyes, trying to look here. <clears throat> I think that looks okay. And to be honest, I, this is... One of the tricks with watercolor is I'm not I'm not necessarily totally happy with this. There's something maybe a little off to me, but I'm not going to keep messing with it, right? At the end of the day, this shadow is on a warm building. I'm going to make it a warmer color and it's going to be darker than this. And that's that's kind of what we have to go on. With time you start to kind of get a feel for is it too dark, is it too light? But right now, I think that's about okay. And so I'm just going to keep moving along. I'm not going to go back in and try to try to mess with it a whole bunch. And I'm just going to keep working this shadow down our paper here. And it's going to need to get fairly dark. I, I want the shadow to be a very dark presence on our, on our paper here. And I'm just going to keep working my way down. And I'm not being afraid, again, just to go straight into those colors. Just working my way down the page. I'm going to pull some pure lavender, cool it up down here at the bottom. 
Always throw a little bit of temperature into your shadows. Yeah, that looks nice. I'm going to just get really cool and really dark down here at the bottom. All right. Now, you know what? I'm just working it just a little bit. That looks pretty good, I think. I think that looks pretty good. Now, <clears throat> again, this is still wet. I want to be careful. I accidentally picked up, I believe that's just a little blob of, of paint, pigment there. So I'm going to try to flick that off. There we go. All right. And hmm, let's see. I'm feeling okay right now. Just kind of looking. Give it a little spray. Keep everything alive. I'm going to grab my palette knife and just scratch in. It may still be too wet. If you go to scratch a line and then it immediately dissolves, the paper's too wet. Don't keep trying to do it. I'm going to scratch just a couple of just a couple of lines here and there. I think this is looking pretty good. I'm going to add that a little bit stronger, I think, on that dome. Okay. All right. For now, that looks okay. I need to come over here and work these windows a little bit. I also need to maybe add just a couple of you know, lines and antennas and things to this, this roof line here. I don't know what that could be. That's okay. We're going to add a, uh, a chimney here off the, off the back of this thing. That's a little too dark. I'll just get some pure water. Put some lines in it there. Try to pick up something a bit more watery for the shadow. Okay, that looks all right. I'm gonna leave that alone. Maybe put just one more something there. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm just kind of I'm just kind of looking and thinking here. I've only got four figures in my painting, but I'm definitely going to abstract more of them into the background. And I'm wondering, while this is still wet, I think I want to suggest some windows back there. And just let them bleed in. Ooh, need some thicker pigment there. That just... Okay. Couple of windows, nothing big. Let's work on the windows over here. I'm gonna grab this brush, which at the moment it is completely dry. And I wanna keep this on the warmer side first. I can always go darker with it. But I'm just going to pull that down off the, off the top there. Not a whole lot. All right. Pull it down into there. Okay, that looks all right. I'm gonna pull a line down through these. Maybe these are all double windows. And I maybe dry brush that just a little too much. I think I would have liked it to have been a little cleaner, but that's okay. I'm not. I'm not gonna go back and fuss about it too much. I may just. Try out the bottoms of those. Let's see. You know what? I think that looks. I think that looks okay. I'm gonna try something here. I know I just said I'm not gonna go back and fuss with it, but I kind of think a a more squared line on the bottoms of those may look just a little bit better. All right, that's it. I don't want to mess with it too much. I'm gonna darken this bottom roof line. Oops, a little bit more there. Okay, that's looking all right. Now, let's grab some lavender, some dark colors, and I'm gonna put a couple of couple of windows on this, whatever this 
building is here. And you'll notice too, once I get my sketch down, I really don't look at that reference photo a whole lot. I'm, I'm kind of just working it on my own, essentially. Um, I'm really only using the reference for sort of the architectural lines and just getting an idea of the space. But in terms of figures and things, unless I just happen to really like the, uh, the reference photo, I, I tend to make all that stuff up and just, just fill it in. Um, paintings don't, or excuse me, pictures don't always make good, good paintings. And people, I always get, uh, I'll get requests sometimes and you'll notice if you paint a lot, but sometimes finding a, a good reference photo can be harder than actually painting the, uh, <laughs> painting the work. All right. I think that looks okay. For some reason, I, I'm not really liking right now. I think the the shape off the chimney and the shadow are, are too similar in tone and color. Um, I'm okay with the tone being similar, but they need to be a different different color to differentiate. So I'm going to make them more lavender, which is essentially what that roof color was, or I guess is. It may be a mistake here. I'm trying to make it cooler. Just to give that little bit of a differentiation between the shape and then the shadow that it's casting. I think that looks better to me. Add just those little divots on it. Yeah, I think that looks better. Even if the color's off, I just I I don't want the, the shape and the shadow to be the exact same. So anyways, I'm gonna quit messing with that. We're getting down to the point here where we want to start working some figures. Generally, I like to work my figures when the painting is a little bit more dry. The background figures, not so much. They can definitely be a bit more kind of loose. And so I'm just going to kind of blot in a couple of, a couple of other people over there and then maybe some people under this umbrella shape over here. Yeah, okay. And at some point I'm gonna turn those into people. Just some abstract shapes. Take and scrape out some of them, maybe to make jackets and things. Again, I've mentioned this in another video, but get yourself a palette knife if you don't have one. A lot of people think it's strange for watercolor, but I use it a lot more than you would expect. Okay, I think this is good for now. I'm going to let this dry completely, and then we're gonna come back and finish up our figures and add just a little bit more detail. All right, so be right back. All right, we're back. So uh, this is now completely dry. I will say I did do one thing off camera. I didn't think it was uh, important enough to bring the camera back on, but before I began to blow dry this, I did take this brush, just pick up a little dark pigment and kind of splatter it into the bottom of this shadow here just to break it up and give it a little bit more interest. You know, it could be pebbles and rocks and dust, who knows what it is, but just to, just to add a little bit down there. So not much, but anyways, uh, let's get started with our figures here. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start in the back here and work on some of our little a little more abstract figures. And again, I'm not, you don't want to draw everything. I'm just, I'm just kind of blotting around a little bit. Maybe, maybe one guy gets a leg. The next one just gets two, two kind of dabs of the brush here. And it, it helps break the characters up, but also give them more movement. If you just draw a, I wish I had a little piece of paper here, but if you just draw two little stick legs, it, it just looks like the, the painting is, or the, the, the figure is just standing still. Sometimes when you break it up and you kind of abstract in and give them a little bit of a wiggle, it, it adds a little bit of movement to your painting, which I always think is a nice, a nice touch. So 
we've got the start of some background characters. I'm going to go ahead and maybe put a face or two on some of them. And you'll see, too, some of these, these quote, characters or figures are, there's not much going on with them at all. It really does not take much to convince the brain that that's a figure. I mean, all it is is a smudge and a dome on top with at least one vertical line below. And it, it, from far away, it looks like a person. So don't get too literal in all your paintings. Try to relax and don't be afraid to just kind of throw your brush out there and let it do what it wants. All right. Now, we've got our main figures up close here. So let's work on these guys. I think I'm going to have this gentleman in a decent amount of just kind of almost pure lavender, which I'm almost out of, unfortunately. But that's okay. I guess he's not going to be that much or have that much lavender in him. I'm almost out. So I'm just I'm trying to move my brush quickly and, and kind of break up the edges a little bit. And actually, I'm going to spray this. Okay. Oops. Just to get this a little bit more wet. And I may grab a brush and just throw a little water down here. All right. So let's take this and I'm just going to briefly pull that down. And see, you know what? I almost wish I wouldn't have given him this other leg because it kind of just looks like he's standing there. You always got to be careful of that. All right. Let's put a face on him. All right. Let's move on over here. And this is my first time. I'm going to pull straight into that Chinese white there. And then come here. And you'll see it'll just bleed up into that, into that figure there. And Yeah, something like that. Mark that part out. Put a face there and let it kind of bleed into the Chinese white. All right. Man, I wish I had a little bit more lavender. If you see my other videos, that happens to be one of my, my favorite watercolors. I just think it's, it's an interesting color. It's cool, but it almost comes off as a gray. I just, I don't know. I really like it's the way it looks. All right, that looks okay. Put a little face on them. It's kind of a bigger face. All right, grab my other brush. I'm just trying to draw it quickly so that it breaks up the edges and you get you get little things that you just couldn't have drawn if you took your time. Could be little things that stand out that look like handbags or the edges of jackets or hands or you never know. I'll give that guy a hand there. And Let's see. What do we want to do here? I kind of I kind of want some more another figure or two over here, I think. So I'm just I'm just blobbing in some of that that Chinese white. I'm just gonna draw again, we're keeping this all very nice and abstract. Ooh, this this person will be kind of walking left to right there. But you'd be amazed at how convincing your characters can be the faster you just you just bring your brush in there and just do a little you know little dance all right draw a face there pull a couple legs down all right so far this is looking pretty nice i think and we're going to come in and give some gouache highlights on these folks uh what did i do with my oops i dropped my paper towel on the floor. All right. Um, I'm going to add some darker figure or some darker legs on this person just a little bit. And I'm going to come in here and smear that a little bit. Yeah. Also helps aid with the idea of movement. Just adds more interest to everything. I want to give one of these folks a jacket. I'm going to Stick just a little hair on that person and that person. And this person's going to get a jacket. Yeah, something like that. All right. 
so far so good. Now, I do want to add some sort of kind of shadow slash reflections on these front figures. And I'll show you how we're going to do that. I'm going to get some pretty thick pigment. And tone doesn't matter a whole lot to me. I guess keep it pretty neutral. We'll, we'll see what looks best. I'm going to take and I'm just going to kind of pull that down a little bit. I'm going to take my finger and just pull it down the board. I want it to be pretty light. And that one was maybe just a little bit too strong there. It may have too much water, but I'm going to use my my finger and just pull that straight down as if it's just a, a reflection. And you want to keep this dry. Both of those had too much water. I'm going to dry it on the board above. We'll do this person. Yeah, that's much better. And maybe just, just pull that down there. Just a little bit of a reflection there on our front figures. And man, I, I, I don't like those very much, but I, I'm not sure how I can fix that. Let's see. And this is where you got to be careful. You know, does it look, does it bother me enough that I want to try to try to fix that? I don't think it's terrible by any means, but I wish I would have started it a little bit further down and a little bit more kind of dried up. You know what? For the sake of risking this painting, I think we're going to leave it mostly alone. Okay. For now, I think we're looking okay. Um, details, details, details. What do we want to add? All right, maybe line or two there. And you'll see, I always add vertical lines as part of my quote unquote detail. I just think that they could be a little, um, there's a lot of times in these cities, lots of antennas, could be little clotheslines, could be, I don't know, all sorts of things. Just adding a couple of couple of details and I'm trying to keep the details more on the close side. I'm not going to add anything to that building. Keeping it sort of barren and lack of windows helps helps push it back. All right. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see. Anything else I want to do? I'm not going to worry about this. I will tell you, do not go back when you've got a building in light. Uh, like, for example, I'm not totally happy with these windows and I'll talk about that at the end on things I think I could have done better but I am not going to go back and keep adding and blotting out. It will ruin your buildings that are in light. Sometimes you can get away with it. If there's a building in the dark and it's still wet, you can play with it. But <clears throat> buildings in, in light, the shadows, the windows and things need to be very sharp. And when you start to go in and mess with it, you can, you can ruin things very quickly. And it's, it can be really frustrating when you've got a good painting and you just go back and try to mess with those windows and and ruin it. I'm going to add what could be, I guess, kind of a, a light shirt for that gentleman. It's a little bit too light. I'm going to dab it out just a little bit. God, this is looking this is looking pretty good. I'm I'm pretty pleased. Just going to add a little bit more something. Oops a little bit too much to this person here and again when you go in move that brush quick you do not want to be trying to you know paint every little thing yeah there's two people there and they're a little dark so let's just blot them out a little bit okay i think we're good here I am going to dry this very briefly. We're going to add our gouache highlights and we're going to be done. All right, guys, last step is going to be adding our gouache highlights. This is just some uh, white titanium gouache from M. Graham. Just got it at your local Blix art supply store. All right, now let's, let's add. And you'll notice, I mean, it really adding a few highlights on your figures. I mean, it just, it 
really brings them out. It's a very nice sort of effect. Try to get that a little thicker. Let's see here. And try to vary how you do your, your people. Um, you know, don't always just do shoulder, shoulder, head. Um, and I'm going to go through here and just dab a couple of places. I had an umbrella here that I forgot to cut out, but that's okay. I do wish I'd done this just a little bit stronger on just that one figure. Yeah, okay. I think we're looking pretty good. I'm going to add just a light vertical line over there. Again, could be light post. could be a lot of things. And maybe just a dab up there. Dab onto windows. I think we're about to call it here. I do want this to be maybe a little stronger on that, on that person there. Okay. And you'll notice too, again, same thing when you're highlighting your people. It's okay to have your shape strange. This over here, it's kind of a strange looking, I don't know, shoulder shape or something, but I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it alone. I want to vary it. I'm gonna add some that could be a hand or something. I do think this this figure just needs a little bit stronger line down there for the leg. I very rarely say that, but all right, I think I think we're about done here. Um, all that's left is to sign it. That's always the most fun part. And I always sign in red, but I don't have that today. That's okay. I'm just going to grab some of that gray and, and sign it down here at the bottom. And we'll take a look at what we do well. What could we have done better? All right. Let's get the tape off. So looking at our painting, what could I have done better? Well, I mentioned this earlier, but I think these windows on this building in the light here, they would have probably looked better had I had sharpened up and not dry brushed straight down after I'd cut the white squares out and we dried everything. When I took this brush and just, oops, there's tape on there, and pulled it straight down, I think it would have looked better if I'd taken the time and drawn some kind of vertical dark squares on the top and then pulled down through the middle with a little brush. But I think they turned out okay. Um, I think the tones look pretty good. There's nice contrast between the darks of the frames of the windows and the light, so I'm happy with that. Um, let's see. I wish I would have softened these windows up a little bit here or done it when this was more wet, but again, that's okay. Our characters are a little bit, maybe one color, but I, I ran out of lavender and I didn't want to go get more. Overall though, what do I like? I think this shadow on this building here ended up excellent. I think that tone is really good. In fact, that one could have maybe been like maybe 10% lighter, but that's okay. That's it's a little bit strange having the this shadow up here, that tone, and that shadow down there, that tone. That's definitely a little bit of a mistake, but I, I don't think it affects the way it reads. I think it looks good. I really like our abstract shapes. I think they look great. Uh, ooh, the only other thing I would have done different is I should have had this brush much more dry when I went in to do these kind of reflection shadows. Um, but again, just things to remember for next time. So. I'm not too worried about it. Ah, the sky looks great. I think the sky looks excellent as well. And again, we did all this with four colors. So don't be afraid to limit your palette. Um, right now, I've got a lot of colors on my palette. And uh, to be quite frank, I'm just keeping it that way until I run out of the paint because my, my full-time palette is going to only be um, maybe six colors max. You really don't need much. Again, it's all about tone, how light and dark things are comparatively within your painting. So anyways, I hope you learned something. If you stuck all the way to the end, consider subscribing and hitting that like button. It really helps get my videos out to more people. And remember to keep on painting.